श्रीमद भागवत गीता चैप्टर ट्वेल्व वर्सेस एट नाइन टेन एंड इलेवन फिक्स दाय माइंड ऑन मी ओनली प्लेस द इंटेलेक्ट इन मी देन दाउ शैल्ट नो डाउट लिव इन मी हियर आफ्टर If thou art unable to fix thy mind steadily on me, then by abhyas yog do thou seek to reach me, O Dhananjay. If also thou art unable to practice abhyas, be thou intent on doing actions for my sake. Even by doing actions for my sake, thou shalt attain perfection. If thou art unable to do even this, then taking refuge in me, abandon the fruit of all action, being self-controlled. the question says after speaking on the way to the manifest and the manifest uh, shri krishna here speaks of four ways of worshiping the manifest so now how to know which of these four ways is most suitable for a seeker we shall first of all understand these four ways they have been beautifully enumerated the first way the topmost one is the sahaj way hmm? krishna prescribes no method there he says arjun just come to me and be seated in me be affirmed in me pretty steadfastly hmm? just do it simply obviously instantly that's a sahaj way do it directly arjun if you really are sincere and if you really have love for me then do it right now right here right away what are you waiting for what do you require a method for nothing is needed you have the intention you really want it you aren't fooling yourself i am here come and be settled in me and that's it hmm? so that's the way for someone who is very dedicated very sincere such a person requires no method no training no education he just needs to be given an opportunity he probably does not even need to be given an opportunity he'll create an opportunity hmm? so that's the first way he saying simply let the mind move into the truth with ease hmm? so this is the most subtle way possible of attaining krishna simply let the mind move into krishna but as we said one requires great sincerity and great love for this to be happening then he says you see if you cannot do that simply with ease smoothly absolutely frictionlessly then the way of abhyas is for you hmm? with abhyas you will be able to do this what kind of abhyas and practice is krishna referring to krishna is saying the mind is conditioned to move towards objects and perceive only their surface or periphery or form hmm? develop the practice of penetrating further let truth be your practice the moment you would look at something and you are in no position to not to look at things being embodied you would look at things so whenever you look at something don't just rush into easy and cheap conclusions ask what is really going on what's happening what am i experiencing where my experience is coming from what is this feeling what is this thought what is this reaction to whom are these things from where do they arise from which center do they come that has to be a practice you could even say if you want to put it in a more classical context krishna is asking here that arjun practice koham who am i what's going on or or you could put in it in many different words different ways but krishna is actually asking arjun to be 
curious, attentive. Pay attention, Arjun, what's going on? The way you are configured, your biology does not really mandate you to be attentive. You can go about life even in inattention. You can continue to live even in inattention. Attention, therefore, is not really necessary or compulsory to continue living biologically. Even if you have no attention, you might still live for 70 years. Therefore, attention has to be practiced. It will not come naturally or biologically to you. It has to be a thing of practice. Biologically, all that comes to you without practice, without any kind of effort, is your biological tendencies. You have to understand this. Nobody ever says that you have to practice foolishness. Foolishness comes by default. But wisdom has to be practiced. Nobody said that you have to practice lust. Lust just comes. You might be a total fool, an utter retard, and still you will find yourself getting sexually excited once you reach a particular age. Did you need some practice? No, you didn't. It just happened. But if you are to understand lust, if you are to cross over, if you are to be a master of your body, then it will require a lot of your practice. And that will necessarily and obviously tell you about your predicament. All the nonsense that happens to you happens on its own. You do not need to prepare for it. You do not need to ask for it. All the foolish things will just keep happening to you as if you have been made to experience and exhibit foolishness. But anything that is life-giving, worthy, exalted, beautiful, would not happen to you automatically by way of prakriti or by way of chance. Beauty and greatness cannot just come to you accidentally. They have to be earned, achieved by way of practice. You have to pay the price. That's what Krishna is saying. Krishna is saying, Arjun, go against your prakriti. And by going against your prakriti, you do not really need to resist it. It's not so much about resistance, it's much more about understanding. And that understanding is actually resistance. I'll tell you why. Prakriti does not want you to understand. Therefore, when you understand Prakriti, you are actually resisting Prakriti. Have you seen that in the moments when you are totally body identified, your power to understand totally diminishes? Have you seen? For example, in your moments of, of sexual excitement, is it possible for you to understand anything anymore? Hmm? The whole atmosphere is erotic and you are terribly aroused. Now, where is your intelligence right now? Where is your comprehension? Where is your wisdom? You are a sheer animal, aren't you? That's what Prakriti wants you to be. Prakriti does not want you to understand. It merely wants you to participate in that primitive cycle. Therefore, when you understand Prakriti, you have actually resisted Prakriti. So you don't need to fight Prakriti. Rather, you can fight Prakriti only by understanding it. And understanding is a much more acceptable, decent and non-violent word. Simply say, I want to understand you. Tell life, I want to understand you. No, I'm not fighting you, I'm not spitting you, I'm not biting at you, I'm not tearing away. I just want to understand you. I just want to understand. That's the reason, the moment you say, I want to understand, you will be offending many who want to relate to you only in the physical or prakritic way. Somebody comes to you and says, I love you with a lot of sentiment and passion. And if you reply, I want to understand this, the other person would take offense, serious offense. 
see you have you have you have expressed your delicate sentiments i love you and what did the other person reply with i want to understand this the whole flavor of the moment is gone the dish has been spoiled when the other person is saying hmm, in a semi erotic way i love you you are not supposed to talk of understanding you are supposed to talk of drowning right he wanted you to drown and you have drowned to un- to understand is to be rescued and saved from drowning so prakriti does not want you to understand but you must understand and that's the practice arjuna is advising arjuna is being advised by krishna understand what is going on be vigilant ask don't just let your mind carry you away don't just let that 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 wind blow you away pause 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 i understand that the drift is pretty strong i understand that the, the inner force is pretty overwhelming it wants to overpower you but there is no compulsion for you to be overpowered halt dig in your heels don't be swept aside hmm that's abhyas right so these are the two ways for the ones who live subtle lives the first way was the sahaj way the obvious way move easily into the ultimate move instantly into the ultimate and the second way was the way of abhyas or practice then he realizes krishna that uh, you know arjun probably is not um, the right candidate to benefit from either of these two ways so he opens up more possibilities he says fine arjun if you cannot operate at the level of the subtle mind operate at the level of gross action hmm? do the right thing do the right thing that's the third way do the right thing do the right thing what does he say here if also you are unable to practice abhyas be thou intent on doing actions for my sake even by doing actions for my sake thou shalt attain perfection do the right thing act for my sake don't act for your own sake don't be a servant to foolishness or littleness whatsoever you are doing do it for something as immense and as vast as krishna right so what he is actually saying is dedicate your life to the right work dedicate your life to the right work do this arjun if you cannot um, attain me purely at the mental level then attain me by dedicating your life to the right work hmm? arjun probably is still not uh, sending out the right wives to krishna so if krishna finally opens the last possibility to arjun and he says all right if you cannot do the right work if you are still a slave to your patterns and if you want to continue doing what you are already doing at least dedicate the fruit of your work to me the third way is actually choose the right job quit from your present job and choose the right job what is the right job the right job is the one in which you are working for a cause that is aligned to krishna that's the third way that uh, krishna is recommending arjun choose the right job but arjun is saying you see there are so many in the people who are terribly afraid of quitting their jobs and enrolling into the right kind of job so what is the fourth option krishna is finally opening up he is saying all right you continue to be in your old rotten job but at least dedicate your money to me if you cannot quit your job then you continue doing what you have been doing maybe that's what you are accustomed to maybe that's what your habit is now maybe you are so habituated to misery that you cannot give up on what you are doing then at least dedicate the fruits of your action to me arjun that's the least that you can do for me 
and for yourself. Are you getting it? Hmm? But that's the obviously least preferred way. Hmm? Why continue to be in misery by doing the right, the wrong kind of work? Hmm? And it is uh, no relief really to be doing the the wrong kind of work and then dedicating the fruit of that work to Krishna. It is a very minimal kind of uh, compensation that you can offer yourself. Uh, not really advisable. It is far better if you choose the first way and if that's too much for you, then the second option or the third option. The fourth one is only for the um, ones with the least developed uh, and the least loving consciousness. Getting it? Now the questioner is asking, how do I know which of these four ways is uh, for a particular person? For every person, the right way is the first way. Go for the first way. Now if you cannot bring yourself to meet the demands of the first way, then try the second way. Hmm? And remember that even in trying the second way, you have lost out on something. And be determined that at least the second way you would ensure it works out for you. Hmm? And if somehow you are so unlucky or so very lacking in determination that even the second way cannot work out for you, then only try the third way. But when you move to the third way, you should be moving with a heavy heart. You should be knowing that you are already losing out on the best of the opportunities. You've already lost out on the best two. Now you have the third one. There is no way you can afford to lose out even on this one. Hmm? And you should not lose out on the third one. I do not see how someone uh, would want to reach Krishna using the fourth way. The fourth way, I repeat, is only for terribly unlucky people.